All right, here. You can turn to uh, Genesis 2.18. And uh, the title of this message is going to be How to Find a Wife. There's a couple guys in here that might need to actually... <laughs> we, might be <laughs> we might be outnumbered here by single people. If we start counting all the little kids, and you know, they're going to need mates in one day. So, uh, In Genesis, uh, the first thing here is why. Why do you need to find a wife? In Genesis 2.18, it says, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet. For him. I will make and help meet for him. So, right here, it's God. God's word saying it's not good that a man should be alone. And uh, and he he made wives and women for help meets for men. And that's that's the best role for them. And it's the best role for a man is to have a wife to take care of. And uh, in First Corinthians seven two, it says, nevertheless. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. And this is prescribed from Scripture to avoid bad relationships, wicked relationships that God tells us we shouldn't be in. And uh, and another one, it, it having finding a wife fulfills some commands by God. In Genesis 1, 28, it says, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. We've got a command to have children, to replenish the earth, and uh, to serve the Lord. As Christians, we should be raising up families that would just glorify God and, and do things for the Lord. Uh, and it's also, it's necessary because we're in a war. We're in a spiritual war. And in, in Psalms 127, 4, it says, uh, as arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. We need to, we, we're commanded, a man is commanded, you know, except certain circumstances to find a wife, have a family, raise up children for the Lord, to do the Lord's work for the next generation. And uh, in the next portion here, uh, you know, when I was trying to write this sermon, there's a lot of preparation to prepare to become a husband and to find a wife. It's just too much for me to put in this sermon. So. <laughs> but, uh, but so we're going to look at how to find a wife. And in Judges 21.21 21, it says, And see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you, every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. <laughs> so... That, that's an extenuating circumstance. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't go hide in the bushes and jump out and catch your wife. It won't last long. She won't say yes. So, <laughs> so avoid that. But it, uh, my first point is uh, you might have to travel. You might have to go to Indiana. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> in Genesis uh, 24-3, Abraham sent his servant to, to another land to get a wife for his uh, for his son, and you might have to go further away places to find a wife. And uh, and th that's the model I'm going to use is uh, when Abraham sent his servant to find a wife for his son. And uh, the first thing that he did when he got there is he prayed about it. He prayed that God would help him to be successful in finding a woman that would be a good wife. Uh, and. The next thing he did, or actually he did this at the same time. And, uh, in verse 13 he says, Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. He went somewhere. He went somewhere special. He went where the, where the ladies are. He didn't go to the gambling place where the wicked women were. He didn't go to the houses of prostitution. He didn't go to some uh, nightclub or, or or where the worldly people go to meet somebody. He went to the place where, where the godly women were. And it was a place not just where it says godly women above it. It's a place, it's a place where women were working. All the women that were working, that were doing their, their uh, good things for their family, went to get the water for their families. And, um, and I'd, I'd compare that to uh, the church. Godly women are going to be in church. They're going to be doing the work for the Lord, and uh, they're going to be in church with their families. And uh, another thing, she was getting water, and 
a godly woman nowadays, we'd hope to be getting that spiritual water right, where right. people will never thirst again, you know? Right. She's getting that water for him. And, uh, and we pray that you guys would find some ladies that would be uh, giving out the gospel. And, um, and so that's, that's a great place to go. Church, soul winning, any, any place like that, that's where you're going to find the right type of lady. And, uh, and he had a little test set up for whenever these ladies would come and get the water. And it was a test uh, in verse 14 it says, And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, and I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto thy master. There's two things here. He, he prayed this, that whenever he asked her for some water, that she would actually give some to her camels, his camels and stuff too. And there's two big marks. One is that she was working hard. She was working hard, and she didn't mind working hard to, uh, to help somebody out. She had compassion on him and his camels. And uh, so it's a funny thing because this lines right up with the uh, Proverbs chapter 31 where it talks about the virtuous woman. Two of the big marks, if you read through there, are that she's, uh, she's compassionate and that she works hard for her family. So, uh, so those are two big marks, and character is what you need to be looking for. And that, it seems like the Bible uh, reassures that this is the character you need in a, in a woman, in a, wife, in a wife, to be compassionate and hardworking. And, uh, and so later on here it says, And the damsel was uh, very fair. She came out and, uh, to look upon, and a virgin... Neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted to let down her pitcher upon her hand and give him drink. And in verse 20, And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. So he found a woman that did these things that fulfilled his prayer to find a good woman. And you know, you know, we have this story and we see this pattern that he prayed and, and he was looking for a woman with a good character and, um, and it was fulfilled. And if you do this, I think that, you know, the Lord will fulfill your prayers uh, if you do this. And uh, my fifth point is that once he did this, and once this was fulfilled, he acted. Uh, he, he said, you know, where are you from? And he, he went back to her house, and, uh, and he talked to her father. He, he told the father everything. He told them his intentions. And, and uh, once he told them his intentions, that he wanted a good woman, a wife for his, uh, his, his master's servant, or his master's son, the, uh, he was the servant of Abraham, the father said this right here in verse 51. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife. And the Lord, and the Lord shall, uh, as the Lord hath spoken. So I did, the last point here is just once all these things align, just act. Just ask, you know, it's best if you can ask the parents but, uh, or ask her father and just, uh, you know, let your, let your godly motives be known. I know you guys are, uh, are focused on, uh, you have the proper motives and everything, and you guys have been preparing, and uh, just let them know. Take that, take that leap of faith, let her know, and let her family know, and just, uh, and just move forward with the relationship. So that's my advice on how to find a godly wife. So. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to preach, Lord, and uh, pray that you would just help all these messages to, uh, to strengthen us all to serve you better. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.